Hey guys, welcome back. Here's a sketch of a covered gate that I designed for a client. And here's how I made it a reality. These are the cross arched cross pieces that connect the two posts together. I'm just cutting the arch out on the bandsaw here. So exciting. Look at that arch. You know, I bought one of those fancy Makita curve base planers so I could plane curved faces and I don't think I've ever used the thing once. Really, if you get close enough on the bandsaw, all you need is a belt sander to smooth out any curve. It gives you a lot more fine adjustment and control. Now here I am cutting out the uh, through mortise for the wedge through tenon. That tenon sticks right through the post. And then there's a wedge going through that mortise to hold the thing all together tight. When you're chiseling out a mortise freehand, you always want to start your chisel at least a sixteenth or an eighth away from your actual line. And chisel out the meat, the majority of the wood that way. And then once you've got the meat chiseled out, come back and just pare that last sixteenth down to the line. That way you don't damage the edge of your mortise. Here's Jonathan, my apprentice, rolling it out. Getting the paint on the wood, because I hate painting. And this is the poor man's mortising technique. It's called a Forstner bit and a drill. Works just fine and dandy. It's not the quickest method, but uh, when you don't have fancy machinery, you just work with what you got. I love this saw. This is my nine and a half inch Ryoba saw made by Gokucho. If you don't have one of these saws, just just go and get one right now. You can find the link to my Amazon store in the description box below or up in the right hand corner of this video. And yeah, you can thank me in the comments later because it's just one of those tools that you smile. It makes you smile every time you use it. Here I am just tracing out the templates that I made out of a 1 8 mahogany door skin and I marked the center lines and then I transfer those center lines around to the other side of the beam so that my joinery is all squared up. And then you just cut it out on the bandsaw. It's not that complicated. I'm not using my stationary bandsaw here because uh, I dulled the crap out of the blade and I didn't have any spares, so I had to wait and order some. Here I am using uh, my 36 volt Makita cordless circular saw. I'm going to be doing a review video on it uh, pretty quick here now that I've been using it for the last couple weeks and got a good feel for it. Yeah, it's a pretty good saw, but uh, I definitely have a few, you know, pluses and minuses to share with you about the saw. So stay tuned for that video. And this is the fun part. Chain Mortiser, I love you so much. Took a little time to uh, get these joints fit just right. Trying to stick huge chunks of wood through other huge chunks of wood. Yeah, it just requires a little bit of finesse. But uh, yeah, it was worth the effort. So this piece is fully mortised right through and then it's notched out for this tenon to lock in here.
When it comes to making a bird's mouth cut on a rafter, I've found that the best way to do it is to just not make a bird's mouth cut on a rafter. I've come up with this little jig here where you just screw a couple blocks to a sheet of plywood and that match the pitch of your rafter. And then you use a straight fluted bit with a bearing on it to follow your guide and it cuts a perfect notch every time. You'll never have any gaps in your rafters, even with shrinkage and it's just a better system, so. Now here we are on the job site and I'm just drilling out the holes in the base of my posts for my uh, threaded rod which is cast into the concrete. And now those holes are drilled off center so that I can get the wrench in and tighten down the nut. If I was to drill the hole dead center in the post I just wouldn't have the angle to tighten the wrench down. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. I know I don't use right terminology, I'm not educated like the rest of you folks. Just bear with me. It all works out in the end. <laughs> Here I am assembling everything with my apprentice. Uh, like most 22 year olds, they uh, never miss an opportunity to take their shirt off, even in December. But, uh, <laughs> Can't say I was much different at his age. <laughs> Nothing like a little ratchet strap to pull everything together. Now we get to see it all take shape. Here I am installing my rafters. And yes, I am aware of how badass I look with a saw stuck to my back. You can see the gate's kind of shaking around a little bit because I haven't tightened it down to the footings quite yet. Now here I am using my 15 16 wrench to tighten down the nut and washer. You gotta chisel out a flat spot in the bottom of your hole so that the washer bears properly. And once that's tightened down, it is rock solid. I was gonna put the soffit on one board at a time, but then I thought, hey, I might as well just glue it all together in the shop and just put it on like a sheet of plywood. And it, yeah, looked a lot better. And saved a lot of time on site doing it that way. This 36 volt saw has definitely got some good power. And I'm going to try using a different blade on it because I wasn't too so stoked with the stock Makita blade. I'm hoping that it performs a little bit better with a nice Diablo blade in it. And last but not least, the Cedar Shake Roof. Make sure you stay tuned for part two of this video where I fabricate the gate and install it with cast iron hardware. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and think about sharing it on other media sites like Reddit or DIY sites that would really help me out. If you're interested in any of the tools that you've seen in this video, you can find them on my website, samuraicarpenter.com. I'll leave a link in the description box. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Samurai Hope.